thank you for taking the time for uh, for basically well to to learn here with me all together about how to create and update your personalized marketing strategy. Thinking especially about 2021. Uh, chances are that it will also be a really challenging year. Year. Uh, this year has been quite challenging. Uh, actually, on my side, super challenging. We have changed a lot of things and uh, improved a lot of things and do a lot of things faster. Um, which means that whatever you are doing right now might not be enough uh, for 2021. So let's double our or continue doubling our, our, our efforts. And uh, this fast training will help you. The, the main idea is to help you boost customer experience. After that, increase engagement. And, uh, and this will help you attract more clients and keep them happier and paying for your services for a longer period of time. OK, th this is like the, 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 the summary of some of the things you can do when applying in the right way personalized marketing to your, to your game. Um, I, I was reading an, a study about, uh, from, from the guys at, at Gardner that said that by 2025, uh, about 80% of marketers will be lost in terms of, of personalization. And, uh, and this represents an opportunity for that 20% that will actually embrace it and will actually do something um, that actually works uh, when, when um, interacting with their audiences. And this is actually not... Do, do, doing personalized marketing the wrong way um, will actually cost you money and not embracing personalized marketing the right way will actually also cost you a lot of money. Um, Forrester said a couple of years ago that uh, companies doing personalized marketing uh, will actually overperform their competitors by 20%. And this is a lot of money. And this is a lot of people are there that are saturated. So today I'll focus on three points. First, we, 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 let's refresh our concept about marketing. It's a lot more than just strategies and tools. Uh, nowadays, it, compromise, it comprise, sorry, comprises several skills and departments. It's a mindset. Uh, you'll see why and how to get there. Then you and I will talk about segmentation. I'll share a few tips, um, things I use to segment my audiences to create targeted messages. And I'll actually, I'll, I'll show you the tags I use or, or the, the method, let's say, I use to, to segment uh, my audiences in a way that I can manage. Um, in my case, I use active campaign for, for the, the marketing communications and also as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a sales tool. And lastly, I'll show you the, the 30 days plan to create our, or update uh, a, a personalized marketing strategy from scratch. So today I'll talk a lot about the, the mindset because a lot of this has to do with, with the mindset. And uh, we'll remove all that fear that we might have when creating campaigns. And we'll see, we'll look at our data in a different way in order to actually use it to create campaigns that, that convert. A bit about myself. For the last 17 years, I've worked in marketing from various perspectives. So this is uh, as, uh, as part of an agency, as a freelancer, um, as a client, and internally. For the last 10 years, I've, I have specialized in technology companies, uh, more specifically in the MarTech world, which I really like. I focus on marketing automation and personalized multimedia marketing and um, product management. And with all these, well, the, the business development part. Um, I run Personal, where we help organizations like Mini, Clinica Santa Maria, or Zumba improve customer experience and increase sales uh, with personalized marketing videos at scale. We fight against saturated audiences, one at a time. So let's uh, get, get started with this. Uh, let's start with the why and the how. Uh, marketing must be must be a conversation, and this sounds uh, pretty cool. <laughs> but let's see why and let's see how. Uh, please take a look at this picture. 
This is how we often imagine ourselves whenever we hit like the, the send button for an email marketing campaign or whenever we, we, we launch a, a display ad campaign or even when we make personalized videos online. We think that we are rock stars, that the audience down there uh, will just listen to whatever we have to say. Um, this will be like from an insurance policy that seems a bit hard to understand uh, to some services that go well with uh, like upselling or cross-selling for um, a hotel, for example, a booking reservation. However, the reality is totally different. We are this little guy here that um, that is trying to talk to this other guy here or to the whole audience, but not from, from the podium, let's say, but from down there. And we do this through email campaigns, display ads against social media posts, phone calls, and so on. If you have any questions, just feel free to, to, to write the question and I'll do my best to, to answer them right away, okay? I am here to, to help. Um, at a party with many people, it is difficult to have a quality conversation with everyone. It is difficult to know their interest um, because there are just a lot of noise out there. And uh, right now, marketing is not about, it's not only about the size of the audience, it's about the quality of the messages and the experience uh, across, across channels. The same happens with, uh, with your marketing messages, actually. The same happens actually to me. I love people, but I'm not like a super social guy. Uh, if there is a party, I'll be the guy in the corner talking to one or two people maximum. And if this happens to you, uh, feel free to just leave a comment and uh, this will help me know that I'm not alone here. Um, your audiences are saturated. Your clients' uh, audiences are satu saturated as well. We all receive just too many messages, um, too many marketing advertising impacts every day. And it's not a matter of volume anymore. All the volume is important. It's more about the quality. And uh, so here is a reality check. Your audiences are, but uh, let me see if I can pronounce this word, vaccinated uh, to protect themselves from your marketing messages. So this means that we as customers, you and I as customers, we are all in, in marketing one or another way, but uh, even we are all vaccinated against marketing messages. So we all know that the, the hi uh, Joseph or hi Eva, hi Danny, et cetera, exist. So your, your customers uh, know exactly the same. They, they know that somehow we use tools to, to, to create those messages uh, at scale. So this means that we need to update and, and change our approach so that it is actually marketing that connects with people, marketing messages that connect with people that improve the experience a long term that helps them increase uh, engagement and engagement equals money. Great. As I mentioned earlier, I've specialized in digital marketing, product management and business development. So do you know what these three areas have in common? They depend 100% on people's input. When you're dealing with uh, the localized audiences that you know they are increasingly global, and you have a small team like my case, you have to think differently. When you see all the social and legal ch changes and challenges we are facing globally, you have to think differently. Think about GDPR uh, or the Californian uh, data protection policy. I'm not sure how, how to call it right now, or all the the, the changes between. Um, the EU and, and the, the US in terms of the, the, um, um, the data shield. There are a lot of things that are challenging, that, that, that are changing. Even our audiences, your audiences, your clients' audiences are changing. And, uh, and this represents a huge uh, challenge, but also an opportunity. Let me tell you a funny story. My little boy, he's learning, uh, he's learning that when my wife and I are talking, and he has something to say, he needs to say, excuse me, can I talk? Which sometimes uh, he does until, you know, we say, yes, you can talk. And guess what? This is how today's marketing and customer experience should work. Legally speaking, we cannot anymore um, in, in most um, like decent markets, let's say, uh, size-wise, not, not size-wise, uh, average ticket wise, let's say, we, we cannot just send an email marketing campaign the same way we could just like three, four, five years ago. 
uh, to prospects that have no uh, have had no interaction with with, with us. Um, legally speaking, you cannot just call and uh, you know at, at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. to to sell a product. Um, and legally speaking, even you know cookies and some type of advertising are are decreasing because uh, the law is is trying to protect customers, um, and this is a huge challenge. So, marketing needs to be a conversation. A conversation takes into consideration the context, the specific context of the you know at, at least two individuals that have that are, that are considering, that are talking, that are thinking about something. Nowadays, this conversation usually starts with you, uh, with not actually with your lead and customer, and sometimes it starts with you. This has led to, to, to marketing automation and to personalization in a way that could help you uh, target more people in order to have com decent conversations with them at scale. Um, you, cannot this, <laughs> you cannot apply marketing automation and personalization at home. Uh, like you know, I cannot do that with my boy, but you can do that with uh, with an audience of five, ten, ten million, ten thousand. It doesn't really matter because the tools and technologies are already there. But the tools are as powerful as the strategy and the mindset are. So if you don't have the right mindset in place and the right strategy in place, it doesn't really matter. You know how powerful the tool you have is uh, because it won't actually work. A conversation is constant, it has rhythm, it's bi-directional, it requires a context, and this is how your marketing should be. Let me give you a real life example. I'm based in Spain. Um, some of you uh, know that. I, I see people from Spain right now here, here connected. So, hola. <laughs> um, and uh, the financial services market is it, it's a bit crazy right now because of all the crazy things that are happening globally. Um, and we all know, uh, well, actually, th th there is a known huge global Spanish bank I have a service with that recently changed their uh, their conditions, the, the terms of the service. They will start to charge a bit more for some services, which is not terrible. Um, I don't want to pay more, but no, it's, it's a service. But here's the problem. They changed the account manager, which at some point called me, and uh, and they try to make me buy a new financial product in order to avoid other new fees that will they will add to the service when this happened i thought wait a minute uh this is a bank you I mean you guys have you literally have a lot of information about my financial life you have a lot of information more you know more information than anyone out there you could have just you know just started this communication uh about three months ago with a fully contextualized multi-touch drip campaign to help me understand the value of this upgrade instead of just trying to you know basically the, the hard sell now since i didn't get it i just started to look for other bank alternative for other services so i'm sure something like this sounds familiar right wait um a good conversation requires a context and this context helps you create segments and this is where we start talking about segmentation as audiences become more and more digital, marketers face an unprecedented challenge when it comes to segment to segment their, their audiences. Market segmentation is the process of dividing an iterate. Let me see if I can say this word word. Heterogeneous. Heterogeneous. You get it, right? <laughs> Market into homogeneous segments based on certain parameters. So proper segmentation is more, it's just much more useful than what it it could see or you might see at, at a glance. For example, you can use it to identify underserved niche markets as well as to create the product uh, that niche might need and um, to create marketing strategies to sell that product with the right go-to-market strategy. And uh, in this context, you can use it to create marketing messages and customer, uh, like the right customer experience uh, specifically for that niche in order to help that people basically to convert and to be happy with your offering. And let's see how to do this. 
Personalized marketing or one-to-one -one marketing consists of creating strategies, content, and follow-up fo uh, follow messages, so follow-up strategies, follow-up multi-touches, let's say, focused on individuals, regardless of the size of the audience. Okay? Personalized marketing allows you allows your organization, any brand, your, your customers, your clients, to have better conversions in their marketing and sales efforts, as audiences better perceive messages that are 100% direct, directed to them. Automated marketing doesn't require much explanation, right? So in this context, it helps you scale this customer relationship, regardless of the tool you use. It could be a super sophisticated one or a really simple one, even you know Google Sheets, for example. To segment your audience, you need to know their context. To have a, like a great conversation, you need to know the context. This context is given by the information you gather, and there are a lot of practical ways to gather lead and customer information. Now, don't waste your time if you are not going to use the data at all. A lot of companies, a lot of companies have a lot of customer data that they'll basically never use. And because they don't use it, they are just wasting their time, resources, they even have departments for that, and they will never use that information. And uh, if you are here, if I'm here, it's because we want to change this, at least for ourselves, for our companies, and for our clients. Let's start with the four, three, four weeks plan, 30 days plan, okay? Week one. Um, what I'll do now is I'll share a 30 days plan to create or update a personalized marketing strategy from scratch, just to give you some, uh, like, a better context. Week one, week one is uh, obviously the first week, and here you'll analyze two things. The first one seems obvious, but it is not, which is your goals. And the second one, your current situation. <clears throat> what do you want to accomplish? And uh, here you really need to be uh, specific, as specific as you can. I'll give you an example. Maybe the sales team wants to increase the percentage of qualified leads by 10% and decrease the closing of the sale to one month and then increase the number of closings by 5%, the conversions. Uh, in turn, the customer experience team might want to increase the average customer loyalty period from one year to a minimum of, of maybe two years. So make a critical review of the product, businesses, processes, um, sales pitch, and all your marketing assets, especially nowadays your website, especially you know with all this crazy world we're, we're living right now, living on right now. Think desperately about different ways to get more customer data if needed, um, and see how, how in the in the goals I described I mentioned different departments. I talk about marketing, sales, customer experience, and there is a huge mistake here that, in my opinion, a lot of companies do. And this happens especially like the, the bigger the company, the bigger the mistake. <laughs> and this is that, you know, marketing is on this side, sales is it's actually there, and customer experience, if they have a department or something, is on the other side there, and they don't actually work together. And this is a huge, huge mistake because in, in the end, they all trying to to um they are all basically after company goals, um, and after people they are in contact with and they all are trying to get more or less to the same place with different angles but they're all fighting against each other instead of working together instead of sharing the same customer data the same lead data across all departments uh the same mindset in order to get to the same place which is let's keep the stakeholders happy increase their volume and let's keep the customer happier for the longer period of time possible. Who likes ants? Not me. I have a friend, a really good friend that loves ants. He's, he's actually a doctor in, in, in ants. I don't really know how to call that. He's a, a scientist. Last summer, we got a lot of ants at home. And I tried to kill as many as I could. So I put all different traps all over the house. And uh, it, 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 it worked, but because winter is almost here, or it's actually here. Well, we, we must do, you must, actually, we, we must, you and I, we must do exactly the same, but instead of killing, killing ants, 
trying to get leads and trying to get customer data using forms, surveys, quizzes, webinars, exit intents, whatever we have at our disposal in order to get more information and in order to get more leads. Don't be afraid of asking more information from asking more information from, from your clients. And also ask, you know, information little by little. Maybe you ask home information today and in two weeks or in a year or whenever, depending on the type of product you, you sell, um, for your customers, you ask your request for more information. Maybe today is just a name and, e and an email. Maybe tomorrow it is the company name or maybe it is uh, what position or maybe it is, you know, what are the three things that, that you're afraid of? Uh, like the, the three things that scare scare um, that are scary for 2021 business wise. So all this information can be used to create better messages, and we'll see how in a moment. Week two, study your database of current and past and potential clients. Here you, you'll take into consideration. The, but basically, here the objective is to find patterns that will help you know who and how your customers are, and from there. Um, different ways to actually send them the right communication, the right marketing message through the right communication channel. Uh, if you can automate this process, if you can scale it, even better. Uh, there are several ways to do this. Um, yeah, to do this, this is study, to, to get to know a bit more about your clients. If you have a CRM or similar tool, this task is likely to be easier. Analyze the information based on the options your tool offers. You can also use spreadsheets. Uh, it is actually very common for marketing, sales, and customer experience teams to use spreadsheets. The more standardized information structure, the easier the task of pattern analysis will be. So if you're able to, to, to create patterns, data patterns, structured information, and use that information, uh, it is actually a huge win. Uh, there is no, no need to get super crazy about the type of information you gather. I'll, I'll show you a few examples in a moment. But the more information you can get that you can actually use, the better. Find patterns. The a key uh, here the the a key that's Spanish. Here the 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 um the secret source sauce. Let's say it's uh, in, in the way or the type of patterns you can find within your audience, within your you know um, sales leads or marketing leads. Um, inbound leads, SaaS leads, professional services leads, etc. Find patterns. Um, speak directly with more people uh, within your organization. If you are in marketing, talk to the sales team. They are your team as well. If you are, uh, basically, ask them for uh, ask them questions that lead uh, that will lead you to understand what the prospects, leads, and customers really like. What are the things they hate? What are they buying? What are they uh, not renewing? For example, talk to account executives. Uh, look for patterns regarding their concerns. Uh, what motivates them you know, to buy or, or maybe objections? Uh, you can use surveys, interviews, quizzes with clients. Uh, these are really useful ways to, to get a lot of information. Uh, about a week, uh, um, a month ago, we launched um, um, a fast survey through. Um, uh, like an email marketing campaign to to know if we should launch a, a new product that we are thinking about next year or not. So it was just you know choose the option you you feel um, that's a bit, a good fit for you. Option one, option two, option three, uh, which are basically three different scenarios. So that's a way to ask for information. We we recorded who who responded, uh, who didn't respond. And we can use that information to create other marketing campaigns, even to try to sell to those that responded uh, positively. Let's say. Um, with this information, with this starting point, let's say, create specific marketing segments that will help you uh, then create better buyer personas and better marketing messages towards those, those specific segments. Let me briefly show you how I use tags to segment my, my audiences. Apologize. <clears throat> I'll leave you this here. Uh, these are uh, the tags I use for our marketing. Um, I, I have a spreadsheet, um, that where I organize all the, all the, the, the information that we get from, uh, from different sources. And, uh, and this information helps me also, um, categorize or organize, um, the, basically every aspect related to leads and customers, leads and customers. 
um, like I'm giving you, I'm trying to give you more time so that you can go over them. And inside of each tag that you see here, uh, so you, you'll see type of user persona, language, action, interest, industry, etc. So inside of each one of them, you would have between four and 30 other variations uh, that are within each and every task. And uh, based on this, I am able to segment the marketing messages we we, we launch uh, auto for automated campaigns or manual campaigns, for one-off campaigns, or for marketing automation workflows. And uh, sometimes I would use three, four, five of these tags to to create a specific some uh, you know a specific segment, and maybe from let's say from four hundred people, maybe I'm targeting four of them only. Or maybe for a thousand people, I'm targeting a hundred of them. So basically, this segmentation tax helps me create uh, help help me create better marketing messages by understanding what are their concerns, interests, what are their what, what's the industry, because maybe someone within this insurance industry has nothing to do with the with someone within the education industry, and a decision maker has nothing to do with someone that will will be more the user of our application in this case. So all these are segmentation criteria, are different segmentation criteria that I can use to create more specific marketing messages. And this has a lot to do with understanding who my audience is and what is the best way to, to engage with them in a conversation. Sometimes, most of the cases, this conversation is started by them, but sometimes it is started by me. Uh, so the more I can, the more information I have, and the the wisely, let's say I use it, I'm able to have better conversations with with these leads and customers, basically. Great. Week three, um, the first half of the week. I'm sorry. And uh, back back to this. For this, I use Active Campaign. You can use any software. I'll, I'll go briefly over softwares and tools in in a moment. Actually, in the next slide. Um, and it really depends on the tools you use. Uh, actually, sorry, it doesn't really really depend on the tools you use. Again, this is a mindset. Uh, in my case, I store all the information in a spreadsheet because it helps me know the tags I use. The marketing tool we use, which is Active Campaign, also have like a tag system, and I use it. But the way I visualize them is here through my through through my through my screen through a spreadsheet. Uh, you can do this exactly the same if you simply use Gmail or G Suite to send emails, or if you use Salesforce, if you use Marketo, any software, Mixpanel. It doesn't really matter. It's the mindset. My mindset. In this case, what matters to me is having the information that helps me know who my target audience is for each and every marketing message, and um, and it would be from customer support to a marketing campaign. It doesn't really matter. Okay, it's the context. The data gives me the context, and thinking about who are these individuals that are behind that data gives me that context. Week three. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to to uh, to write them. I'll be more than happy to to go over them. Okay, week three. So the first half of the week, select information that you can use to create personalized mes messages. So until now, we have focused on understanding that marketing is a conversation, especially nowadays because of all the legal and social changes. Your audiences are saturated, and uh, and the law uh, uh, is protecting them each and every time more, which is okay. Then we talked about segmentation and how important understanding uh, our audience and creating that segmentation criteria that work for you works for you is actually uh, what you should do. Um, and this segmentation and this study will help you understand who your audiences are, user personas, buyer personas, and I'll talk I'll talk about more one more concept around that in a moment. And this will help you now do uh, create marketing messages in a more targeted way. Um, so let's talk about that data selection, then the distribution, and then the tools, how to select the tools you might need, okay? The first half of the week, focus on, on the information. So just sort all the data fields you can use in list or like in a list or in a spreadsheet. Similar to what, what we had here, um, or you could have a spreadsheet that has, you know, column A is name, column B is country, column C is product that that person has bought in the past. Um, any type of information that you have, even, well, I give, I'll give you more ideas in a moment. With this information, you can create a synthesized, um, synthesized way or version of buyer persona. 
A buyer persona is an, an, an archetype of the ideal client of your service or product down to earth. Uh, it is based on real knowledge about your current or past clients. Um, so it's not just like the target audience, you know, people like in the concert, the, the image of the concert I showed earlier. It's more about, um, you know, people that are like Daniel have our decision makers from this type of organization. They are product managers and they usually buy because they have the power to buy and pay for this service. And they have other tools that integrate with our tool and, um, the fact that the our tool is they, they are trying to find something that is easy so that their team doesn't waste time integrating blah 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 so it's that down to earth based on information that you know from your clients so that's the the like in general terms the buyer persona at a glance it sounds like science fiction but remember by now like in week three you've been doing some research You've been analyzing your audiences you, you've been working a big by big big, big uh, week after week on, on on this two weeks already and this gives you uh, a lot of information again it is a mindset it is looking at the data looking at the people talking to them uh reviewing um customer support calls chats uh, emails uh objections and all that information that will give you a better a better um understanding of who your clients and potential clients are and based on this you structuring that information uh in in a way that you can actually um scale um so fields think about fields or columns in a spreadsheet visually speaking that you can actually scale um so during the second part of the week uh you will focus on choosing the right distribution channel based on your target audience focus on 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 um for example the channel that has worked better in the past with respect to the uh, to past act initiative that you have launched um, towards the same audience. For example, in B two B B two B environments, um, it is very common to use email. Emails and phone phone calls are are like the kings, let's say, for B two B marketing. In B two C environments, email is uh, it's it's also common, like in e commerce, for example. However, in recent years, channels like Facebook Messenger or Twitter or WhatsApp have become very popular. Even a chatbot, all those tools have become, or communication channels have become really popular and are increasing in terms of engagement, in terms of opening rates, um, responses, and so on. Regardless of the distribution channel you choose, I have good news for you. Any type of content can be personalized in your marketing and sales communications. So this would be for personalized text-based content, personalized images, personalized videos, uh, personalized audios, personalized PDFs, personalized Word documents. If it is digital, it can be personalized. But actually, in fact, you cannot even just send personalized letters by, by, by post. Um, so it doesn't really matter the type of content, the type like the, the, the communication channel and the type of, of yeah, like the, 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 the content itself. Um, if it is digital paper, if it is an email or not. What matters is what is the type of content that has the high, uh, like has higher chances of conversions in regards to the audience, the segmented audience you should have already selected for the, the campaign, the workflow, the strategy, and so on. In terms of tools, um, once you have chosen your distribution channel, it's time to talk about the tools, right? So there are many tools that you can use to create personalized marketing messages. Uh, the choice of one or the other will depend on several factors. Um, let me give you a few, a few, a few ideas. Uh, you would take into consideration the needs of your team, team or an organization. Again, um, it's not that marketing is here, sales is there, customer experience is there, is, is there. If by any chance you guys can work together and have the same tool or at least share the same data internally across tools, that's that's actually a lot better um because often you would find that maybe customer experience has a lot of information that sales has the sales team has no idea about uh, and then marketing has might have some information analytics and things like that that they won't share does not because they don't want to it's just because again the mindset with with sales or customer experience um then think about the budget it's quite important 
when selecting a tool, obviously. Um, think if, if this will be something that you will do like on a continuous basis or it would be like a, a one-time thing for one specific use case, uh, one, one specific uh, use. Think about the database, the size of the database. Um, there are tools that won't handle really well, like uh, uh, um, a wide load of data, and there are tools that will do it just fine. Um, so think about that. Uh, other functionalities that might be required uh, from the tool, we need the tool to avoid duplications. Um, so analytics, CRM, sending SMS, chatbots. So sometimes you would have tools that do exactly the same, but they're just used by different departments. And budget-wise, that doesn't make sense. And especially in 2021, if you can optimize that um, by using like centralized some of these tools, even better. That's my my, my opinion. Also, the, all this comes because I work with a lot of companies. And uh, so, so, I mean, this is something that happens a lot. Um, then think about the level of dedication and knowledge of the tool uh, that you want to use or can use uh, by the person who will actually execute the strategy. One thing is who buys it, the, the tool and pays for the tool. And a different thing is the user of that tool or the users of that tool. Um, some average tools from, from, for customer experience automation and marketing automation are Active Campaign, HubSpot, Salesforce. And uh, in our case, our personalized video marketing tool, Personal, the personal platform. Um, the software has integration with all these tools and uh, through Zapier, for example, or through our API. So integrations are quite important nowadays when thinking when, when talking about marketing and customer experience, even sales automation. Week four, great. Uh, it's time to have some fun now. Uh, at last, it's time to create, experiment, and try again. So do A-B test as much as you can because it will give you a lot of information. If you have like a big audience, uh, or maybe if you have, let's say you have like a thousand people in your audience, don't don't test it with with uh, with all of them. Test some messages with maybe fifty of them, a hundred of them. I usually recommend about ten percent of your audience if it is uh, uh, like a minimum of a thousand people, um, so that you can actually know if it's time to scale a message that that is that is working. If you are getting worse conversions or average conversions, it, may, it means that it is not working as expected in comparison to other, the other things you are already doing. And there is something that you are probably doing wrong. And it happens a lot. It happens to me all the time. So doing A-B tests is really, really, really important. In, in, in week four, we'll, we'll focus on creating the email scripts. If you are sending emails, phone scripts, or uh, ads, um, even, you know, WhatsApp messages, whatever, or even you know cards, uh, cards, um, um, post, uh, yeah, postcards, whatever you're sending to your audience, um, just focus on the the the, the script, the, the the messaging part, the the copywriting part. Thinking about the information you have available from your clients, and I'll show you an example in the next slide. Uh, it's a really fun one, um, and how you can use this information create uh, in a creative way to engage with the viewer, to engage with the reader, to engage with the person that is on the other side, okay? So think about how, we, how different ways you would create a message if you had that person just in front of you, if it wasn't like a, an automated scaled message. Remember that any type of content can be personalized, but personalization is not just about, hello, John, hello, Eva, hello, Danny. Uh, it is a lot more than that. Uh, for example, personalized videos are very, very, very effective uh, in terms of increasing success rate related to click-through, like CTR, email opens, and even to get more sales, more engagement to keep a client for a longer, you know, for for a longer period of time in terms of custom, customer loyalty. But it's not magical. If if it is a, a, a plain message, it will work better than other type of content. But chances are that you could have done a lot more. Um, by contextualizing the message in a way I'll, I'll tell you in a moment uh, in the next slide. Um, again, context is, is everything when thinking about personalized um, marketing. Great. Um, let me show you a simple personalized message example, which is the one you have on the screen right now. In this email, uh, you can see that there are several dynamic fields and even paragraphs, uh, like for example, it uses a personalized image 
personalized video, personalized text, and he contextualized the content. When you combine data plus assets that have been created to for specific buyer personas and adapt this information in real time, then you can create an individualized content, um, which is even better. It's personalization and individualization is different. When you individual individualize a content, you are taking into consideration into consideration not only the data but also the context of that data, and you translate translate that information into something that is useful to the end viewer. Uh, you do this based on what I call the augmented buyer persona, which is far better than just a target audience or even a buyer persona. A buyer persona is great. You should have it. Uh, be, but the augmented buyer persona is better because it adapts to the individual. Here is my academic <laughs> uh, definition of an augmented buyer persona, OK? Um, so again, Sp Sp Spanish is my, my mother language. So this is my own definition. So it hasn't gone through Harvard or through uh, University of Oxford or, Oxford or anything like that. So apologize. So an omitted by your persona is the profile of an individual comprised by all the interrelated information gathered about that individual provided by one or many data sources and individuals by your persona, taking into consideration the individual's particular context to create products, services, most commonly, marketing messages that fit the individual's needs, objections, desires, and interests aligned with the objectives set by the organization. Sounds weird and long, huh? Well, let, let me give you a summary. When you combine the data you already had from an individual, from a customer, from a lead, the people in your databases uh, segmented, uh, plus the potential buyer persona, which will impact or should impact the creative assets, the copies on, um, you know, from colors to the type of content you'll use, um, the tone of communication, all these, all the creative assets in general. And then when you take into consideration the information you're gathering in real time, that's when you are actually applying the augmented by your persona. So you have, you already had some data, you already had that person um in a bucket like in a buyer persona bucket let's say but somehow when you combine new data from that individual and take into consideration the data you already had from that person and take into consideration the buyer personas context you're able to create more specific messages that at the beginning uh, at a glance sorry um actually that, that are totally different from what you would initially thought about that person. So by doing this, um, actually, I'll, I'll show you an example. Well, what you have in, on, on the screen to, 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 to explain a bit more about this. Um, let's talk about customer engagement. Customer engagement is all about their context, okay? the individual's context. It goes beyond, well, you should go beyond a customer's first name. Think outside of the box. Analyze all you know about different individuals and marketing segments. Then think about the best way to structure this knowledge. This will help you create personalized marketing messages that help you engage with your customers. Let me start with the data. In this example that you see here, you have uh, the first name is Kevin, product, uh, hotel room, date from the, five, the 5th and the 10th of June summertime for the sake of this example and if you are if you're like most most marketers out there that 80 percent i talked about earlier um that's all you would look at like at a, at a glance and that that's probably all you would use and that's all the information because that's all the information you actually know at a glance again a personalized email would look like uh hey Ke hi kevin and that would be it no more no less Let's, yeah, for, for, yeah, personalization, checked. Customer engagement, checked. And uh, my question is, is that actually enough? If you haven't lost a single customer because of the global pandemic, um, and this is me trying to be funny, uh, if, you, uh, if your audience is 100% engaged, you know, they open all your emails, they answer any, every, each and every call, uh, Email CTR, you know, is just super high, 100%, maybe. Um, then 
it would be enough. And that's great. But the truth is that there is room for improvement. Um, you and I, we, we all need to translate this information into something that your lead or customer can easily understand, something that evokes a reaction on that person. For this, you need to use the context to achieve a higher level of engagement. You need to talk to your customer in a unique way. Take the time to think how about how. And don't take me wrong. There are times when all you have is that, hi, Kevin. But back to the example, uh, imagine that he's not Kevin, he's not traveling by himself. He's traveling with his wife, Caroline. Kevin just made a reservation in a fancy hotel where they're, they've already been a couple of times. And the fact that they have been there before changes everything because this hotel knows the, you know, how important customer engagement is. The hotel knows that Kevin likes to play golf because he has already played golf uh, before. Uh, so has shown some interest maybe through a survey or a simple question uh, by, like, by a human face to face. And that Caroline loves eating gourmet food. There are different ways for this hotel to make a profit from a great customer engagement strategy. This is when upselling and cross-selling comes to, to, to the scene. And this, again, has to do with the context. Let's say that Kevin made a reservation. The hotel wants to increase the revenue per client. And how can this hotel do this? Well, what if the hotel connects Kevin with one of his biggest passions, which is golf? And uh, since Kevin is not traveling by himself, what about his wife? Since she has eaten in the hotel's restaurant several times, the hotel can assume that she likes gourmet food. They can also ask. Even before sending the campaign, they can ask like uh, through a survey and then a couple of weeks later, send the campaign to target uh, them or her. As you can see, the hotel can segment their database uh, and, and it can also use hyper segmentation to create an individualized marketing approach. This individualized approach uses many customer data variables to increase engagement and conversions, basically one-to-one -one marketing. And this is when marketing personalization actually takes place. And it helps you fight against you know, losing customers or against uh, just keeping the same revenue per customer. Using your customer's own context will help you get this attention. In this case, he, we are using humor. You know, the, your doctor will uh, will be proud of you because you're eating your you know your iron um, because you're playing golf. You know, the, the, the stick is made of iron or something similar. Um, not a golf player, but it, it's playing with with these words a bit and to to make it like a funny comment to get his attention because we know that he's a man and men are usually more uh, they like humor and uh, and we we know that. Usually, ladies like like to eat better than than we do as men, and uh, combine when you combine all that, we know that women wives are usually uh, you know the decision makers at home. Uh, it depends on the type of product, um, but if you are if you tell your wife that you are going to this hotel and and that you're the only one enjoying you know this expensive golf course. Uh, that might trigger something, but if you tell them that you know we are giving you, uh, uh, the, they're giving us this offer where I can get my golf thing, and we you can also get gourmet food. We can be together, romantic weekend, etc. This is actually better, and you can do this automatically at scale by taking into consideration the context and using uh, dynamic fields for full paragraphs, words triggering. If, the, if, if, if you're using this word, let's change it automatically for by, by this other word. If it is a man, let's change this other word by this other word. If it is, you know, that's the context, uh, using the context in real, uh, in real time. Um, and that's what you can also do through marketing automation and personalization. Uh, in this example, we also see that there are different types of, of dynamic content. You have the video, you have, sorry, you have the, the text, you have the image, and you also have a personalized video. Let me show you an example. This is a simple personalized marketing automation workflow. In this example, a video is automatically created from the structured data provided by the lead or the customer um, using a, a spreadsheet or Tableau or Airtable or Google Sheets or using a marketing automation software like HubSpot, Marketo, um, Active Campaign, MailChimp, Salesforce, regardless of the software. You have structured data and that data can be used to create marketing messages. And these videos, these video messages can be then uh, automatically added to your marketing messages like the one we saw here. And this can be done at scale.
by doing this, you are able to evoke that person that that person's reaction because that person pays more attention to the content. Yes, you could just show hi Kevin, and that would be great. You will get better conversions. But if you're able to contextualize the message to who Kevin is based on information you already know about Kevin, you're able you'll, you'll be able to create uh, to have more market better marketing and sales conversions. And this is basically all you know. This is what we're talking about here: getting better conversions. Uh, short, mid, or long term, depending on the type of workflow you are talking about or you have in mind. So this is how every marketing automation workflows workflow looks like. Obviously simplified. You can make it more complex. You can you can you know more complete. Let's say through um, retargeting, remarketing by combining this workflow with. Facebook ads using Facebook Pixel uh, with other other types of maybe um, advertising and LinkedIn if you have like a B two B audience, but in the end you can use the context of the individual to create better messages, and you don't need to be Google, you don't need to be Facebook, you don't need to be any big firm out there to to do this. Um, and chances are that not even big firms, from our experience, uh, do this because it requires. Again, changing the mindset, thinking about your data, thinking about your customers in a different way. Let me show you uh, a few more examples. Um, pretty much every audience out there loves video. So think about what the type of content that like that your that your audience like. For example, about eighty percent of millennials use video in their buying decision process, decision decision buying process. Uh, but not every message should, should be a video because there are times in the in the customer journey when all your 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 target audience needs to need, needs to read or needs to see or consume is a WhatsApp message or an SMS. Actually, SMS marketing is is back because it's uh it's not as saturated as it used to be a few years ago. And other channels like email and others are more saturated depending on the type of audience. Um, about 80, 93% of marketers love um, digital video and use it, and it's because it pays back. But when you talk about personalized videos, um, which is what we do uh, uh, in personal, personal, uh, personal, and uh, you are you, you are able to well, personalized videos are about a hundred and sixty percent more effective in terms of click through rate than a generic video, and we all know that generic videos pay re back really well in terms of ROI. They work really well. Personalized videos in terms of sales are about 116 more or less percent more effective than generic videos again. And obviously the percentage can go up or down depending on the industry, type of audience, and especially on how well the strategy has been created. Regardless again of the type of content, you can create workflows that the one you have on here on the screen. Where it's like, if this, then that type of scenario. If the user, this is like a donor scenario. If this person has already donated money, and more than X amount of money, let's go, let's follow this path. If it has, hasn't donated or if it has donated um, just up to certain, like more than X amount of money, then let's follow this other communication, marketing message path. So based on all the variables, you can create different, different scenarios. Um, this is one of the reasons why um, using um, segmentation tags like the one I showed you earlier, work really well to do this in a more structured way, um, but it really depends on the tools you use. For example, you can use Zapier, which is integrations platform to do this using filters and path. It works really well, Zapier with a Z. This is another example. This is our, actually a real life example uh, where in this case, um, um, an OTA online travel agency is creating different types of videos and types of emails based on who the, their customer is. And they will recommend one or another product, like to do to upsell or cross sell, uh, in order to get more money from from these customers that have already bought bought uh, 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 um, um, an airplane ticket. Something similar could be done with insurance, hotels, universities, education. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's data, structured data that you put in, 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 into service in a creative way to create more contextualized messages. And this is a really simplified one. It could be could get more complex, but again, it's, it's about the mindset. Let me show you some examples and, and it will be, uh, I'm almost done with the presentation. So if you have any questions, this is a great time to, to ask them as well, okay? For example, a travel agency, uh, you know, Fatima is traveling from, from 
from this destination to this other destination? How can you help her feel that she's already there? Uh, it could be through personalized videos or personalized images, personalized emails. If you send a, a, a generic email, she would read it if it is like a confirmation type of message. But if you create a contextualized email, a contextualized WhatsApp message or SMS or even ad, you will get better conversions that will help you get more money out of that person because you get to hearts, minds, and then pockets. Okay, it's about their context. Let me show you other examples. In this case, you have like a personalized in video call to action. Uh, every time, um, every video can be delivered with a custom call to action, personalized call to action. Because maybe the Fatima's context is totally different from Jones, from Danny's, from Eva's, from Jose Luis. And maybe it is not the same product that they all want to buy. But based on information you already have about them, you can then show the right type of call to action based on who they are and based on what the data tells you about them. <clears throat> Here, for example, you know, you know what's the, the information she needs to know prior to taking a flight. And here, pretty much the same, okay? Great. Lastly, here we have a landing page that is automatically created to help um, Fatima, Danny, whoever, understand what's the value of the service, what's the value of the service, and based on that, per that person's context. Maybe the text in the, call in the landing page is totally different for another individual that has ex the same exact basic data but their context is different. And based on that content, you can then automatically create the content. You do not need to have like super tools or anything like that. Even Google Sheets will work with this. Again, it's more about the mindset. And the thing about this mindset is that it gives you more money. It helps you increase the conversions. It requires more work. Yes, it's hard work at the beginning, um, but you get better conversions. And again, Marketing nowadays is not just about having the, 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 the wide, big audience. It's more about creating different segments, niches within that big audience, and even going more granular uh, thanks to technology in order to get better, better uh, reactions, more reactions from your customers, from your audience. This is what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, right now is the right time. And uh, if you want to contact, um, um, I'll be more than happy to to um, to be in contact uh, with you to share some um, advice, ideas, and also to learn from from you. Um, I really appreciate your time today, and uh, I'll give maybe ten seconds <laughs> so that you can say if you have any questions or any comments. And uh, you feel free to use the the comment um, field for both for Facebook and YouTube. I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's been, I had a lot of fun actually explaining all this. Um, if you have any questions, you have my email there. I'll be more than happy to, to help you. And uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Jose Luis, I believe. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, have a great day. Great rate of the day, whatever you are based. If you're in Spain, uh, it's time to, almost time to rest. If you are based uh, in the US or Canada, um, you still have a long day ahead. So enjoy it. And if we are not able to talk uh, before Christmas and the end of the year, have a blessed uh, end of the year with your family, friends, and a blessed 2021. It's going to be challenging, but we can make it with God's help. God's help. Take care. <laughs> Bye.